Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss again the potential for a late season hurricane coming out of the Caribbean. Where will this storm potentially go? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaldimits.com for Thursday, October 24th, 2024. As you can see in the Atlantic, all is quiet at the moment. We have the remnants of uh, Hurricane Oscar moving up through the eastern half, um, northern half of the uh, Atlantic as an extratropical system now on its way towards Newfoundland, Canada, and then eventually out to sea. Bottom right of your screen, we have the intertropical convergence zone and monsoon trough. So we don't have much action to talk about at the moment in terms of immediate threats uh, for tropical development. But we do have a looming threat potentially forming towards the end of the month around Halloween towards Election Day in the United States uh, in terms of time framing. And it would all focus on the Caribbean uh, Sea. Right now where we have where we're going to be looking towards possible development beyond the seven-day mark is uh, we have two tropical waves moving through, one near Venezuela and the other is outside the Caribbean uh, approaching the Trinidad and Tobago on the southern half of the islands. But like I said, right now for the next seven days, the National Hurricane Center is not expecting any tropical development. We have to look at the longer range uh, we have to go towards the end of the month into the first week and a half of November where the Climate Prediction Center is saying we have a high to moderate chance of the tropical development in the Western Caribbean. And why is that? Well, we went over in yesterday's video, we have a more favorable MJO coming into the Atlantic Basin, which is going to create a lot of rising air. Now, typically in November... That is, is exactly climatologically where we would be seeking or looking for any possible development would be the Western Caribbean, just off the southeast coast of the United States and out in the middle of the North Atlantic, where we could see potential like subtropical storms form. In terms of where these storms are, this is where we are right now. The end of October, we have 88 storms that have formed. Uh, since 1855, since we've been keeping, trekkered, uh, keeping records, so you can see where all these are concentrated and how it substantially decreases when we get into the first 10 days of November. But doesn't mean activity is gone completely yet. You can see exactly where those storms are, concentrating in the Western Caribbean and outside in the North Atlantic. So where we are today... Let's look at the GFS model. The black hexagon is what's left of Oscar, or looking like an extra tropical system at this point, and our two tropical waves in blue hexagons on the bottom of your screen. A large amount of wind shear in the Atlantic, uh, very light wind shear in the Caribbean right now, but we have a lot of dry air there. Even though we have two tropical waves, there's not much associated with them. So like, we, like the National Hurricane Center was saying, we're not expecting anything over the next seven days. It's beyond seven days. That is the area that we're going to be concerned and watching over. So let's skip over to day seven. This would bring us to Halloween on Thursday, October 31st. And with the MJO moving into this region, we're going to see the rising air once more. So you can see with all the dark green in the Caribbean, that is our moisture content associated with our rising air. And that could be what's conducive for tropical development. Light wind shear environment still like we have today, but now with moisture creates a vorticity center that could start to form according to the GFS model in seven days time. Now, key note, is where this potentially could go, because that's the questions I was getting in the comments in yesterday's video. Just to the north of the storm, you see that big circle, several concentric circles. That is our Bermuda high pressure. So that's going to keep the storm suppressed in initially in the Caribbean, but also drifting it towards the west because the flow of high pressure is clockwise. 
but in the upper level of the environment, in the uh, we're going to have this upper level trough just to its north and west. So that's depending on how strong the storm can get. Uh, and what I mean by strength is the stronger the storm, the taller it gets in the atmosphere. So a weaker tropical storm, tropical wave doesn't really feel the effects of the upper levels of the atmosphere, but a hurricane will. So if it can get uh, relatively strong, it can feel this upper level trough here and be pulled northward. So what we're going to look at here is our cyclonic potential vorticity. And basically here, this yellow orange uh, stream just to the north of our black hexagon where I have the black arrow, that is the upper level trough. That is what's going to be pulling this storm northward at least on this model run, to see where it could potentially go. So here it would be on day 8, day 9, and then day 10. As you can see in each progressive uh, run on the model, between 7 and 10 days, you see that upper level trough erode away. So now you have this very big area of upper level ridge over, over this storm. That's that would allow it to rapidly intensify, unfortunately, as you can see on this uh, model run, it does. It goes down to a 966 millibar hurricane. Um, but again, this is just one model run, so don't take this for a grain of salt. This is still very far out, 7 to 10 days. A lot can change on models this far out. But this is just one scenario. And you can see how it slowly drifts northward because it erodes away at that upper level trough creates this bubble of protection around it in the upper levels of the atmosphere creates that low wind shear environment and where would it steer now with that upper level trough out of the way well we go back down to the low levels of the atmosphere our bermuda azor is high as you can see is centered over the appalachian mountains where hurricane helene had dumped all that rain in southern appalachia uh, so with that counterclockwise flow, I mean the clockwise flow, would still be pushing this storm in the low levels towards the west. So everyone would think, oh, that's going to take it into the Gulf of Mexico. Not quite sure just yet, because it's all going to come down to timing. Because there's also going to be this upper level trough coming in from the central plains. And depending on how strong that is and how fast it moves would also sweep through so maybe it wouldn't enter the gulf of mexico it could go straight north or it could go into the eastern gulf of mexico like we saw with helene or barrel or it could go the opposite direction uh, if this is very fast moving cold front and actually causes the storm to go in reverse and go eastward like we saw with hurricane lenny wrong way lenny as they all say so here's the ensemble models on the GFS showing where this storm can go 10 plus days from now. As you can see, it completely, after 10 days, it loses all congruency and says, I don't know where it's going to go. Some of it takes it out into like wrong way Lenny territory and goes northeast out and towards the Atlantic. Some of it keeps it uh, struggling over western Cuba near the Yucatan Peninsula. Some of them go up into the eastern Gulf, and some go up uh, along the east coast of the United States. Still too many factors to say where this could actually go. First, we need to have the storm form and then see what the weather conditions are around it when we get to that point. These are just possible scenarios at this point. In terms of the European model, it takes a little bit longer for this storm to even develop. So GFS is very quick with the storm, just like it was very quick with Nadine initially. Uh, but we all saw that Nadine took a long time to form and really didn't really form until it was in the eastern Pacific and became uh, Major Hurricane uh, Christy over there. Um, so you can see we do have a system forming, but it takes 10 days on the European model to even start coming together, the vorticity. So... GFS wants more convection bias, a little bit quicker with the storm versus the Europeans saying it's going to take some time, but still have something forming there with the MJO present. 
And again, where these storms go is still a crapshoot. It take but it will be determined when the storm forms, and then what the weather conditions are, so, uh, steering currents at that time. But as a, an example, this was Hurricane Lenny. It formed just to the north east of Nicaragua and Honduras and then actually went eastward across the Caribbean and became a major hurricane before moving towards the Lesser Antilles Islands and gained the name Wrong Way Lenny. Another storm uh, that was a late season storm in November was Hurricane Nicole. Um, and I bring up Nicole only as a uh, reminder that even though the west coast i mean the west coast of florida has been getting hit a lot lately east coast still can get hit too even this late in the season so if it comes up out of the caribbean and then high pressure tries to reestablish itself could swing it back towards the florida peninsula so that is, these are still possibilities of what could occur so here's the ensemble models going out to 10 days as you can see they're mostly concentrated in the western to central southern caribbean of where this storm could develop and s slowly steer its way in a more northward direction and then where it goes from there will determine where it goes again it's going to be how fast this storm does develop is it seven days like the gfs is it beyond 10 days like the european model and what's the position of the high pressure and any troughs in the region at that time. So our focus will remain in the Caribbean uh, between now and when this potential storm does form. Next name on the list would be Patty. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the ciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.